Shut up and sit down. Welcome back, Dakar fans. We are on stage 11. Same old story. Still trying to make up time on uh, from all of those time penalties I took on stage 5 way back then. Uh, Never-ending quest to make up the time. Uh, speeding penalties suck in this game, uh, but it's my own fault uh, for not paying attention. Um, man, so if you're playing this game for the first time, around stage five, watch out for your your speed zones. Um, if you hear a whole bunch of beeping, that means you're speeding through the town and you just took a whole bunch of penalties. <laughs> that took like an hour and a half of them. Uh, so yeah, this video, I am going to run it all the way through. No fast forwarding um, from a suggestion from a viewer. Uh, try to explain a little bit of the navigation to you guys if I can. I'm not the best at the navigation. I don't know what all the symbols mean. Um, pretty much, uh, you know, you're following that road book there. That tells you what cap heading um, on your compass to go by uh, so you're going to head that way and it usually tells you how many kilometers are to that next waypoint uh, some of the waypoints have a uh, they have a gps marker that you need to hit and it'll it'll hit it automatically or it'll let you know actually uh, the distance and direction to it some of them though uh, like this one that we're coming up on i believe uh, I'm gonna have to see. I don't know if it is exactly. Yeah, this one has an actual GPS heading, so I can follow that up at the top uh, to uh, to make it there. Uh, so, like this one says uh, on the right side of that, uh, the middle box there, we need to follow the Rio. Not too sure what HP means. Uh, could be hidden waypoint, possibly. Um, no, it's not that. I'm looking on another sheet here, and I can't see what HP means. Um, I'd have to look in the game to see what exactly that means. Yeah, it was pretty cool though, Dakar. Uh, this game. Uh, so if you haven't watched any of my other Dakar videos, uh, so I'm playing as Ricky Brabeck for the Honda Rally team. Uh, he is a multi-time uh, Baja 1000 winner with Honda. Uh, last few years, Honda has had a tough time in the Dakar with, uh, with Ricky. Uh, last year, he probably should have won it. Had a mechanical in the transmission or something like that. Uh, something in the engine. Um, his teammate the last few years, uh, Juan Breda, he's also had problems uh, either going off course or mechanicals. Um, he was usually one of the fastest guys winning multiple stages also. Uh, so we'll see in 2020 if uh, Honda can finally break KTM's win streak of like 18 or 19 of the past years. KTM has, has won the Dakar in the bikes division. So it looks like in this waypoint, we are following the Rio. Uh, we are probably going to go under a bridge at 25.39 kilometers. Now the bikes and quad class, you... Oh, here's a competitor. Yeah, it, the AI goes slow here. Right under the bridge, there we go. Right. Then I got to take a right at the fork here, stay in the Rio. So you can take water damage in your bikes um, and mess up your electronics. I have done that. I've gotten stuck in the mud. Um, it was buried up to the axles. Somehow, I, I think I was trying to dig it out. You have a shovel if you do get stuck. Um, you can try to shovel yourself out. I shoveled the bike. It seemed like it got deeper in the mud. and. Uh, for some reason, uh, the electronics got destroyed, uh, so I had to restart from the last waypoint. Kind of sucked. Yeah, and these are these little uh, passage control zones where it automatically uh, moves your speed down uh, to the speed limit. And this is why I got confused on stage five. I was like, oh, it, it automatically uh, limits your speed. No, when you go through the towns and it's the speed zone, 
Uh, it's not automatic, and that's what that's what killed me. Really cool too. It's at different times of the of the day that, uh, when you leave, um, so you may or may not use your headlight. So this one, I actually turned my headlight on. Actually, there's three settings for the headlight. I got I just run it on the brightest when I need it. Uh, I think it helps out. So again, if you have not watched any of these Dakar, Dakar videos, um, this game is made by uh, Blue Moon Studios. I believe they're a Spanish uh, development firm. Uh, you know, I think this is one of their biggest games they've made. Um, the physics, the physics are really bad. I mean, so if you're coming from this from an MXGP, uh, MX versus ATV, Supercross games. You are going to say this physics is crap and probably put the game away. Uh, never play it again. Uh, the real joy, I guess, if you, if you want um, about this game is the navigation portion. Um, if you're a fan of the Dakar rally, uh, it's just fun doing these navigation points and uh, exploring the exploring these huge environments. Um, so these, the speed on this, uh, you know, you, you see the kilometers clicking by pretty fast. Uh, the scale of the world is uh, one thirty-second scale. Uh, so for every whatever. Uh, anyways, it's <laughs> trying to trying to do the math in my head. Uh, for every meter, it's equals. 3.2 meter, no, 32 point some meters, 32 meters in the game. Or every kilometer that you actually ride is really 32 kilometers. There we go. So yeah, again, uh, the Dakar, you know, that's the whole thing. It's navigation, navigation. Oh yeah, right here. So sorry, you got to watch me do this. I got to turn off the HUD. Cause I like to take uh, screenshots during the game, uh, so I can use that as a thumbnail for my YouTube videos. Uh, unfortunately, they don't really have a camera mode or anything, so you have to turn off the HUD, take the pictures while you're playing, uh, so you can hear the little camera clicks while I'm while I'm doing it. Just taking a whole bunch. Yeah, but the environments, man, they look, they look so nice, uh, in some of these. Uh, so I am, I am in, uh, Berlin, the area of Berlin in Peru still, I think, um, that's where it's at. Uh, so the beginning of the Dakar, uh, f first, yeah, four or so stages are, uh, all through the sand dunes, uh, man, it is a lot of dunes. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, but man, you get tired of the dunes, uh, so it's really nice. At the end of the rally, we're moving into uh, these different areas that were out of the sand finally. And during the middle of the uh, rally, uh, for about four stages, it was raining the whole time. Uh, so they actually modeled the this Dakar rally the game after what happened in the real rally so it rained all those uh, all those stages in the real rally of 2018 and uh, so right now I am looking for this waypoint at uh, you know I went past it I was supposed to be at 53.89 kilometers I'm already at 56 so I need to backtrack back to the last known waypoint that I know of Uh, usually you can do that by going a straight 180. Um, whoa, man, you can get some air, but uh, <laughs> you take damage. Uh, so I know my last checkpoint out. So you can you can you can scroll through your roadbook, reset the kilometers and everything. But I know the last one I did was around here, and I left the. I know I hit a waypoint about at this little hut, little lean to. So I'm gonna try to hit it again. I was supposed to go 330. I'm sorry, I was supposed to go uh, 52. And I should have reset my my kilometers there. And then I would have had a better bearing on where exactly I needed to go. 
So I'm going to just try to get lucky here. And we found it. So it was actually on the road. So if I would have just stayed on the road, uh, that was weird. Eh. Usually when there's a dotted line like that, um, it means you're following tracks. Well, see, like you're, so you're kind of going off road. It was weird. I guess I was kind of off road, but man, I think I could have just followed that little dirt road. Right. So this one, we are going 330 to kilometer 59. Uh, it's giving me a lot of triple dangers and downhill markers in the road book there. Oh, and HP, I get it. So HP stands for uh, off piste or off track. That means you're not following the track. So every time it says HP, that means I should be out there in the grass, in the dune someplace. Um, if it doesn't say HP, it's probably going to, I'm going to be on a road or some kind of dirt road or paved road. There we go. I figured something out <laughs> by reading the RTFM guys. Yeah, at least this one has a GPS. Okay, it did that. And I believe it was the previous stage. Um, I, I still think it's going to come back to bite me at the end. Uh, I took a bunch of damage following some Rios. Uh, Rios are the rivers or creek beds, whatever you, whatever, it's just a generic, generic term for the dry river beds, um, or creek beds, little ravines uh, that you need to follow. But I kept hitting a whole bunch of sticks, uh, like it was driftwood that was in it. Uh, so I took some damage, so I, I checked, you know, I wanted to repair some of it. So I repaired my front and rear tire. At the same time, I'm like, oh, look at all this. Well, <laughs> Ricky Brabeck just launched. You know, I saw a bunch of other damage on the bike that I could repair and, you know, it takes time to repair. So I was like, oh crap, I'll just repair all this. Well, that was stupid because I lost a whole bunch of time. I think it's going to come back to bite me at the end of the rally. Um, I'm trying to make up time on these leaders. I'm, I'm probably an hour and a half behind still at this point. And, uh, you know, in 10th place or so, I don't, I don't know if I can catch these guys. So even right now, you see, I am 13th overall on the stage. Uh, you know, I need to I need to work my way up that leaderboard every single stage I can. Try to do better in the overall. All right, this next one. So that P, that means I need to follow the tracks. There we go. It means peace. 
French. The guys who made the Dakar originally, they were from France. It was that's it used to be the Paris Dakar race, uh, Dakar Rally. So they would race from Paris down to uh, the Mediterranean. I don't know how much of a race it was between there. It's probably just mainly you know they would take uh, the roads. I don't think they really did uh, much racing in France itself from Paris down to the Mediterranean. They uh, get everything on ferries is what they would do over there, ship it down to Africa, uh, depending where they'd start, Morocco, any of those northern African countries, Mauritania, I think, possibly. Um, and then from there, that's where the real rally started, pretty much. Uh, they'd race through Africa down to uh, Dakar, Senegal, on the west coast of Africa. And that's when I started watching the Dakar, man, back in the 90s. Um, it was always hard to find it, you know, it's so easy these days with technology, the internet, pre-internet days or the early internet days, uh, you know, cable TV, ESPN, you have to try to find the Dakar rally. Um, not always the easiest thing. So uh, even now, the coverage of the Dakar, at least in the United States, is not very good. I could have sworn it used to have an hour long coverage um, maybe 10 years ago. Then it switched over to NBC Sports, I think, and they just used a pre-packaged thing from the Dakar organizers, I guess, that put the package together, uh, the TV package. So it's only a half hour long, you know, so sometimes you don't even get to see things that happen. Uh, you don't get to see the big trucks. Uh, they, they concentrate a lot on the, the bikes and the cars, of course, but um, man. Yeah, and you can, you can run the big trucks, side-by-sides, quads, bikes, cars in this game, which is pretty cool. So after I'm done with these bikes, I think there's a couple of DLCs that came out for this, a couple different rallies. Uh, I think I might run the big trucks. Uh, I have a wheel. Um, man, it's going to be crazy, though. Uh, man, doing a 45, some of these stages, this one I believe is going to be around 35 minutes. Uh, some of them, though... 45 minutes to an hour long uh it's pretty pretty fun pretty crazy right so again the peas being on peace stay on the road take a left And if, it, oh man, like I said, the main, the main draw to this game is just the adventure of the Dakar, trying to simulate that a little bit, you know, the best to, best to the ability that, you know, they can for us mere mortals that will not be doing the Dakar ever in our lives, you know, it's a, a dream for a lot of us, um, just the time, money, uh, and dedication to actually do the Dakar. And I, I give props to every single one of those guys that do it. Even the factory guys, um, more so, you know, the privateer ra ra privateer riders that do it. Um, those guys, man, they got much respect from me. But again, could you imagine this game, though, if it had good physics for these bikes? Like, take, I mean... Everybody derides the physics of the MXGP, the milestone games. Take the physics of that, even. You could run around in these canyons and these hills, and man, could you imagine just doing some awesome. Okay, we're in a speed zone here 30 kilometers an hour. Usually I just keep it in first and uh, let it idle. It, it idles uh, without even touching it. So I lose a little bit of time, probably, but it's so sensitive to try to keep below 30 with the throttle uh i don't even try it and so if you also are not familiar with the dakar too much uh yeah like i was mentioning before it started in really a, it was an african race uh through africa uh man i forget exactly when they moved but because of deteriorating security concerns in Africa, you know, all of the uh, 
even probably precursors to ISIS and just all of those African warlord guys and just terrorists down there. Um, it wasn't safe really anymore for an event like this because you have these competitors that are out there by themselves in most cases uh, during certain periods of time. So just security of the whole rally was uh, very hard. Um, so liability concerns, etc. Uh, so they moved it to South America, uh, Argentina, Bolivia, Peru, um, Chile. So that happened. I'm just going to throw out a number. So it's, don't hold me to it, but 10 to 12 years ago, I think. I don't know how many exactly they've held. Oh, this river crossing, I just went through the center. That's the bad thing usually to do. You usually get stuck in the mud or it slows you way down. Uh, there's usually two alternate routes to the left or right that you could go around that mud. Uh, but yeah, they have been racing in South America for the past decade or so. Um, but next year it is moving to Saudi Arabia in the Middle East for the first time. It will be really interesting. Um, I think it's still in the spirit of the Dakar. You know, the environment that they'll be racing through. Um, it's just interesting just because, you know, uh, I mean, I hate to talk politics and stuff, but just some of the... I mean, there's women competitors. Like, some of the best competitors are women. Uh, Elias Sanz. Uh, and a Catalan rider. She is awesome. She's got ninth place overall versus the men, the women, everybody. She's got ninth place overall on the bikes. Um, she's finished like the last nine or ten of these in a row. She's always finished. Um, anyways, you know, Saudi Arabia, they don't have a lot of really good... Uh, what do you want to say? Rights for women there. Um... You know, so, uh, you know, I think women just got the ability to drive cars there <laughs> legally. Um, anyways, I think it's pretty cool, though. Uh, we'll see Laia Sanz. Hopefully she can do good. Show them, uh, you know, it's a, it's a patriarchal society. Uh, for good or bad. Um, I, I have to say bad, but... Uh, Anyways, it's in Saudi Arabia. That's all I can say about that. Um, I think it will be pretty cool, though. The the dunes, they're, they're supposed to be a... And that little weird little symbol there, like the plus minus and that little check mark, I think that means more or less visible. Um, yeah, that's what it means. More or less visible. So they're kind of just doing some... Oh, hit that rock. Doing some shorthand there. Yeah, right there. It was more or less visible. <laughs> All right, so another river crossing at kilometer 160. Double danger. Probably because there's some mud. We'll see if I can go around it this time. Ah, it was a short one. Oh, it was some mud, though. Oh, keep going, keep going. Don't get stuck. Yeah, so Saudi Arabia, and I don't know if any of you guys are Formula One fans or even World Endurance Cup. Uh, if you are, you, you know who Fernando Alonso is. He's a multi-time F1 champion. Uh, used to race for Ferrari, McLaren. Uh, you know, he's attempted the Indy 500. Uh, he didn't qualify this past year. Uh, the car was just too slow. Um, anyways, he's kind of retired from F1 right now. He doesn't have... Uh, he was linked to, he retired last year, kind of left voluntarily, I think, um, to be able to do, do uh, Le Mans. He's won that twice in a row now with Toyota. Uh, anyways, he had a test back in May with the Toyota Dakar team with uh, Janil de Villiers, a uh, South African driver. Um, also Toyota, Nassar Alatia races with them. Uh, and just the other day, uh, I believe it's Junior uh, de Villiers. He posted on Twitter a little photo that had Alonzo's name and his name on the side of the Toyota 
uh, truck, uh, the, the, the rally truck, uh, you know, saying, you know, could, could Alonzo do the Dakar in 2020? Uh, news reports that just came out last week, they're saying that he's really keen to do it. Uh, you know, he wants to do the Dakar. Um, there are some rumors, though, that he, he could have a, a chance next year to return to F1 with a top team. Uh, they're saying either McLaren or Ferrari. So not to go too down the rabbit hole on F1, but that being said, if, if any of those rumors are true, for one, that means either at McLaren, probably Valtteri Botas is out. Uh, because I don't think they would drop Hamilton, but I don't know. Hamilton and Fernando Alonso have had a contentious teammates in the past uh, at McLaren. Uh, so Mercedes, I don't know if they would want McLaren. Uh, I mean, sorry, want Alonso and Hamilton together. But I couldn't see Hamilton going someplace else. If he returned to Ferrari, he used to race for Ferrari uh, a while back. Could never win the world championship with them. Came close. Uh, I would have to say man Sebastian Vettel might be gone from Ferrari uh, because they just had a uh, Char Charles Leclerc the French guy he's their young guy I don't think they're gonna get rid of him because he's doing good he's just had some bad luck this year uh, I don't know I don't know if it's a good call for either of them uh, you know he's not really saying these rumors are true but I think he's holding out just a little bit uh, but According to Toyota, it seems like, you know, they, they won Le Mans with him twice. Everything's in place. He doesn't have any F1 commitments right now. They're just waiting for his signature on the contract to do Dakar for 2020. Uh, I hope he makes up his mind soon so he can start practicing uh, this summer um, all the way up until the Dakar happens, um, you know, in January of 2020, Saudi Arabia. So we will see. Okay, HP 174, we are going to go off piece. I don't know what those little symbols are. Maybe some grass. I think those mean bushes. So at 204, it seems like I'm just going to go straight on the 174, cap heading 174 through the bushes. zone coming up Is actually a passage control point. Okay. Got to get to the Rio again. They're just sending me out here making circles, it seems like.
Double danger, it's still telling me. You're supposed to go slow when you see double danger. Um, I think most of the time I ignore it. I just launch the stuff. It's only when you get the mud that really sucks. That is some air. <laughs> I told you the physics were good in this game. Yeah, I was trying to cut down uh, some distance there uh, so I didn't have to follow the Rio exactly. Just uh, cut straight across. Yeah, I guess that's uh, probably not a good idea all the time. Getting close to the end though. Only a couple more waypoints, one more waypoint and then the finish. So you can see the scale. I mean, it took me how we've been running 32 minutes right now. We've gone 255 kilometers. Uh, there's a couple stages that are, oh man, I want to say five, 500 plus kilometers. Um, I think they count, there's some road sections in. They don't let you do the road sections. Uh, but yeah, there's some long ones. One hour plus I've taken on some of these stages and it it's tiring uh, trying to follow this road book the whole time. And here we go. Finally, stage complete. 33 minutes. Not bad. That was an actual, that was a pretty short stage. Without penalties. Thank goodness. Third overall. So I made some time up. I, I forget who's leading the, the rally right now. We'll see. Uh, but really did not make up much time. Look at, I'm still 11th place overall. Oh man. Oh man. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, pretty, pretty fun. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, leave me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you thought about the video and the Dakar in general if you have any questions. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks a lot, guys.